الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أحسن خلق الإنسان وعدله وألهمه نور الإيمان فزينه به وجمله وعلمه البيان فقدمه به وفضله وأفاض على قلبه خزائن العلوم فأكمله ثم أرسل عليه سترا من رحمته وأسبله ثم أمده بلسان يترجم به عما حواه القلب وعقله ويكشف عنه ستره الذي أرسله وأطلق بالحق مطوله وأفصح بالشكر عما أولاه وخوله من علم حصله ونطق سهله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي أكرمه وبجله ونبيه الذي أرسله بكتاب أنزله وأسمى فضله وبين سبله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن قبله ما كبر الله عبد وهلله أما بعد فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت Dear brothers and sisters we start by praising Allah tabarak wa ta'ala we praise him we ask him of his mercy we do not attribute any partner to him alone to him we bow our foreheads and we worship we ask Allah Ta'ala that He send His salutations and peace upon the Messenger of Allah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon His household, upon His companions, and upon His complete Ummah at large. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah Ta'ala creates the human being, then He gives the human being guidance. He sends the messengers who guide them with everything that they need to be successful. And those messengers forbid them from every action that will destroy them. And every action that will cause them to fail in this world and the hereafter. There is nothing that the Messenger of Allah left out within his guidance. He guided us to everything. We believe that the message is complete, the book is complete, and the, the hujjah of Allah, the proof of the guidance of Allah Ta'ala is also complete. And that Allah Ta'ala's Messenger guided us to every good action and forbidden us from every ugly and every bad action. Allah Ta'ala commanded the human being to observe His commandments and likewise in every moment to observe those commandments. And that not only the human being, one part of him or her will observe the commandment, rather every limb of the body has been ordered with a commandment befitting to it. That it at every moment, every part of our body observe that commandment. Every part of our body somehow obey Allah Ta'ala and stay away from disobeying Allah Ta'ala and falling in sin. A small part of our body but a very active part of our body, probably the most active part within the day, a part which we don't even notice. So small, but its obedience is very large, and its disobedience can be very large. The consequences of committing an action with that limb can also be very great. Is my brothers and sisters the tongue, the tongue. Allah Ta'ala spoke of the human being and creating the human being. Then He mentions after creating the human being, عَلَّمَهُ bayan That Allah Ta'ala taught the human being how to express himself. How to talk. How to communicate. Talking can be done by the tongue. It can be done, done by signals as well. The essence of the talking is not necessarily the words. But it's the communication which is taking place, it's the expression. The most complete manner of that is by using the tongue. And the best manner of that is by using the language, the words which are a vehicle, directly translating what the heart possesses. The tongue 
you translate language to language, the tongue directly translates what's in the heart. The tongue directly translates and clears, that's what bayan means, right? To clear something, to clarify something, ivhar. The tongue clarifies what's in the feeling, what's in the emotion, what's inside the inner mystery of the human being. And Allah Ta'ala gives this power to the human being. Allah Ta'ala has praised it. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned how significant it is. Allah Ta'ala taught the first of mankind this speech by which the angels then bow down to the human being. Allah Ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salatu wasalam the names of things. To be able to identify things and to give things a name. This is a very powerful capability. This is a very powerful capability. Some of these psychologists when speaking of the memory of the human being, one of the theories of how the human being when they're infants, they cannot remember much. Most of us won't remember much from our infancy. The reason is because of the power of language, the power of words. That infant doesn't have words to identify objects and things, that's why he doesn't remember them. That's why the infant doesn't remember them. This is a theory behind why uh, uh, infants may not remember. So language, the tongue, the words have a very powerful effect on the human being. Have a very powerful effect on the mind of the human being. They shape the mind of the human being to a great degree. Language can shape, shape your mind. Language can shape your environment. A person's environment is shaped by what they talk about. By the words that, that emanates from their tongue. So my brothers and sisters, when we're talking about the tongue, we're not just talking about this physical small piece of flesh. Rather, we're talking about the words which emanate from it and the consequences of those words. And that's what I want to navigate my attention and the attention of every person sitting here towards. How, what the great role of the tongue is within our life. When some of the ulama speak about the tongue, Imam Ghazali rahimahullah mentions when speaking about the tongue, that it's small within its size. But the consequences of the motion of the tongue and the sound which comes of the tongue is so great that it's just the movement of a tongue. It's just the movement of the tongue by which a person enters Islam and by which a person exits Islam. Right? It's just the movement of a tongue which can cause another human being to love you or cause another human being to hate you. It's just the movement of the tongue. The tongue has the capability which other parts of your senses and other parts of your body doesn't have. The touch, all it can do is physically touch things. Your ears can only hear things. Your eyes can only see things. But your tongue has the power to discuss everything. Even things which don't have a physical reality. Your inner mysteries which we mentioned earlier. Your thoughts. What's in your heart. Your words can give life to those ideas. Your words have the capability to give life to abstract things, intangible things. So the spectrum of the tongue is very wide compared to other parts of the body. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah when mentioning the tongue he says, أَيْسَرُ حَرَكَاتِ الْجَوَارِحِ حَرَكَةُ اللِّسَانِ وَهِيَ أَضَرُّهَا عَلَى الْعَبْدِ That the easiest of the movements of the body, something you'll never be tired of. You exercise for a little bit, if you're not a person used to it, you'll get tired very quickly. The easiest movements of the body, which a person never becomes tired of. Rather, the, the more that a person moves it, it pushes him and drives him to move it more. Is the movements of the tongue. And those subtle movements of the tongue can be the most harmful for the person. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, when speaking of the physical, the physical picture that you get of the, of the tongue. He says, the tongue is like in the mouth, like the heart in the chest. Except that the tongue has been placed between, behind two gates, locked behind two gates. The first being your lips, the second being then your teeth. As for the eyes, there's one gate, your eyelid, one gate. As for your ears, there's no gate. 
and it goes from the inner to the outer in the spectrum of how much each is harmful. The harm of the tongue is greater than any part of the body. That's why it's been placed like this. To remind you and I that keep it closed, keep it locked. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, There is nothing, there is nothing ahwaju ila tuli sijinin. There is nothing that should be locked and chained longer than the tongue. Longer than the tongue. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ There is not a word that emanates from the mouth of a person. There is not a word that emanates from the mouth of a person. Except that there are angels which are writing those words. Your words are a part of your actions. We don't differentiate as Muslims between words and actions. Words are actions. You and I will give account to our words just like we give account to our actions. This is why one of the pious predecessors said, a person who acknowledges this, that my words are a part of my actions, you'll start to see after that, that your words will start to lessen. You'll start to see after that, that your words will start to lessen. Because you understand the responsibility then. You understand that just how there are consequences of actions, there are consequences of your, your words. Your tongue has a direct connection with your heart compared to the other limbs of your body. The channel between your heart and your tongue is direct. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يستقيم إيمان عبد The belief of a person can never be upright. Where is the belief? It's in your heart. The belief of a person can never be upright until his heart is upright. And the heart of a person can never be upright until the tongue of a person is upright. It's a direct, it has a direct link to the heart. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said that the tongue of a person is right behind his heart. Whenever he speaks, keeping his heart in mind, then he'll speak less. He'll speak less. He'll think of his words. He'll take account of his words. Whereas the hypocrite, his tongue is not behind his heart. His tongue is not behind his heart. Rather, it's in front of his heart. Before the heart thinks, the tongue will make its movement. The tongue will make its movement. And so that's why some of the ulama would mention that the wise person, his mind is in front of his tongue. And the foolish person, his tongue is behind his mind. His tongue is in front of his mind. And we'll speak about later on the virtue of silence and why the wise ulama and people of knowledge, they observe silence and what silence means to a person. But again, to go over a bit more of the strength of the tongue over your body and the governance of the tongue over your body. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, every morning when the son of Adam wakes up, the limbs of the body shout out to the tongue and they beg to the tongue. They beg to the tongue that innama nahnu bik, that we are only by you. In istaqamta istaqamna. If you will be upright, we will be upright. In i'wajajta i'wajajna. If you're going to be crooked, then we're going to be crooked as well. If you're going to be crooked, then we we are going to be crooked as well. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There is no part of the body." Each of these narrations, what do they highlight? The strength of the tongue, the governance of the tongue over the body, the effect of the tongue, the influence of the tongue. There is no part of the body, the Messenger of Allah says, except that it complains. It complains of the sharpness of the tongue. It complains of the sharpness of the tongue. A poet said, Jirahatu sinani lahalti amu, wala yaltaimu ma jaraha lisan. That the tongue is so sharp, the tongue is so sharp that you have a sword, you have a weapon, you have a sword. If you cut someone with that, maybe the, maybe the cut will heal. But if you cut someone with your tongue, it's possible that cut will never heal. That cut may, may never heal. So the Messenger of Allah spoke about the tongue, Allah Ta'ala spoke about the tongue, the effects of the tongue, the influence of the tongue, and in specific the Messenger of Allah spoke about the dangers of the tongue. 
and some of the first dangers and some of the first sins we all know about. The problem is not knowing, the problem is practicing. Many of times when you and I come to the khutbah, it's not about things that we never knew. It's about things that we know. Allah Ta'ala spoke about the khutbah as a dhikr, a reminder. A reminder is something of what you already know. If you don't know it, it's not a reminder. But the problem is not in knowing it, the problem is in practicing it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke to us about the dangers of the tongue. The sins of the tongue. Many of them very quickly will come to our mind, like backbiting, like lying, like cursing, like gossiping, despising people with your words. But what I'm going to bring my attention and your attention and where I want your attention to come to is not just to the physical damage of this action. That you see people use wrong words and then relationships are broken. That you see people use wrong words and then society is destroyed. I want you to see my brothers and sisters how your tongue destroys yourself. How your tongue before it harms anyone else. It starts harming you from right here. It'll start right here and it will destroy you. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam said that on the Day of Judgment, the people will come and that the most and the majority of the sins of the people will be the mistakes of their tongue. The sins of their tongue. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, O Messenger of Allah, give me guidance. Tell me of something that will enter me into Jannah and protect me from the fire. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starts, starts to tell him, believe in Allah. Then what? Don't assign any partner to Allah. Then make salah. Then give your zakah. Then give your hajj. Then he tells him. Then he tells him. After all of this, O Mu'adh, should I tell you of an action which is going to preserve and protect protect all of these actions which will be the criteria of all of these actions which will navigate the direction of all of these actions so then people started to gather around the messenger of Allah Mu'adh bin Jabir radiallahu anhu said I started to fear that maybe the messenger of Allah wouldn't tell me now that people started to come around the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi said that the action which will be the judgment and the criterion of the rest of all of your worship. The rest of all of your worship is what? And he took out his tongue and he pointed to it. And he said, Amsik alayka lisanak. Give yourself control over your tongue. And look at the, look at the way he, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi says it. If you know a little bit of Arabic, you'll understand that the sentence is a little bit different than how you would say it in English. He didn't say control your tongue. He said, Amsik alayka lisanak. Give yourself control upon your tongue. Don't let your tongue control you. Control your tongue. Control your tongue. What happens when my brothers and sisters, when people indulge in backbiting, when people indulge in argumentation? What happens when, when a person is very much of an argumentative behavior? It has a harm to that person beyond, beyond just his words. It has a spiritual harm. Allah Ta'ala spoke about the human being that أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ jadala. The human being is more than anything argumentative. What happens when a person argues and argues and argues? What happens? What's happening inside? What's the disease which is being, the tongue is breeding inside? What happens is that my brothers and sisters, when a person is argumentative, go back to the disbelievers of Makkah. They at times, how did they argue with the Messenger of Allah? You'll see that same habit in people of argument today. People who like to argue. They would put cotton in their ears. They wouldn't say anything. They'd put cotton in their ears just so that they wouldn't hear what the Messenger of Allah had to say. When a person is of an argumentative behavior, haven't you noticed people will start to raise their voice in arguments? People will start to use bad words to navigate the complete attention of the discussion towards a strange environment? Why? Because the, the, the self of that person, the nafs of that person starts to inflate, the arrogance of that person grows in such a manner that he's raising his voice because he doesn't even want to hear what the other person has to say. What did the disbelievers do? They put cotton in their ears. My brothers and sisters, arguing is not of just your words, you, you start to g gain a personality. 
it starts to build a personality within you of arrogance. That arrogance, what is it? Batarul Haq. To deny the truth. People can be in front of you. The messenger can be in front of you. The Quran can be in front of you. And this is why the tongue is beyond words. You may not say a word, but you'll argue with the Quran with your heart. You'll argue with the Sunnah of the Rasul with your heart. The transcendence of your words, my brothers and sisters, is directly to the heart. What happens when a person increasingly, excessively says bad things about other people? What happens when you do this, when you gossip? What happens when you backbite? My brothers and sisters, when a person excessively backbites, when a person excessively backbites, then that's when a person starts to become heedless of himself and his eyes become on the mistakes of other people. You start to despise other people by your heart. Sometimes you don't need to say a word to despise a person. A simple singling, singling, singling of your eye, a simple singling, per, your peripheral vision can despise a person. Just that, that sight. You don't need to use words necessarily to despise another person. But your words when you backbite other people will teach you to do that. It will teach you to despise other people. People of silence, they don't look at other people, they look within themselves. But why are people afraid of silence? You're in a congregation, people don't want to be silent, they want to fill the, the gap with talking. Why? Why do people like to talk? Because the second you're silent, you'll be left to your thought. The second you're left to your thought, then you're afraid of what you'll find inside. You're afraid of what you'll find inside. So my brothers and sisters, when a person excessively despises other people, then his attention and his ana, his nafs, his vision towards himself is lost, and he starts to only look at other people. One of the ulama, Jalaluddin al-Rumi rahimahullah, mentions a story. He says that, in his poetry, he says that a person who lived in a jungle, a native person, who had tattoos all over his body, he put rings and all these strange things. He's traveling and he sees a shiny thing in the grass. He sees a shiny thing. He goes, he grabs that shiny thing. As soon as, soon as he looks in it, it's a mirror. It's a mirror, he looks in it and then he throws it and he says, no wonder it was thrown to the side, look how ugly it is. Look how ugly it is. Right? The person is heedless that what may be the ugly he's seeing is only within himself. The Messenger of Allah said, the believer is a mirror of another believer. My brothers and sisters, if we have the habit of following, tagging the mistakes of other people, it may be a greater sign of what is within us. It may be a greater sign of what is within us. The Messenger of Allah spoke about the virtue of silence. And this is what I want to, to finish with. The virtue of silence and what can silence teach a person? Some of the wise ulama of the past, they would say that the human being was created with only one tongue. He was created with two eyes and with two ears so that he could listen more and so that he could see more. What happens when a person listens? What happens when a person sees? Then they start to, they start to learn. The outward, they start to gauge it and they start to learn it. But when a person only talks, then he's only giving out. He's only giving out. He doesn't give himself the time to think. So Allah Ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنًا They give the glad tidings to the people who they listen. They listen. The first step to listening, my brothers and sisters, is to be silent. The first step to listening and to learning is to be silent. And so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu even said, if you see a believer is a person of silence, if you see a believer is a person of silence, then go and sit with that person. فَإِنَّهُ يُلَقَّنُ hikma. That person is gaining wisdom. That person is gaining knowledge. Your silence will teach you wisdom. It will teach you responsibility. It will teach you accountability. Your silence teaches you presence. As I had mentioned earlier, it teaches you presence. It teaches you to be present. 
As a person who's always talking, they're never present. They're never present. People of silence are present. They're thinking and they're thinking of what they should be thinking about themselves. Not talking about other people. Not talking about other things which do not concern them. This is one of the great sicknesses which talking will give birth to in a person. Mala yani that you start to follow and you start to instigate all those things which do not concern you. None of those things concern you, but you'll start to waste your time with it. And that which is important, then you won't give it due diligence. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, when asked, what is the path? What is the path to safety? How can a person safely? You know, how can a person find safety? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, "Amsik alayka lisanak." Control your tongue. Control your tongue. Imam Qushayri rahimahullah, he mentions, he mentions a poem. Kam min hurufin tajurrul hutuf. That how many words, how many words, they'll have very bad consequences. They'll drag a person to their death. They'll drag a person to their death. Meaning the consequences will be very, very bad. Kam min hurufin tajurrul hutuf. Their consequences will be very bad. And that when a person then weighs after he had spoken, he would wish, what the Allah sakat? He would wish, why hadn't he had been silent? Why hadn't he had been silent? And so my brothers and sisters, the, the ulama mentioned the virtue of, the ulama mentioned the virtue of being silent. And they mentioned the, the reason being because of all of the mistakes that a person can possibly make because of, because of speaking and because of the, all of these possibilities of falling inside of that hole of saying something wrong. And I'll conclude with a, with a, with a short statement. Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash rahimahullah, he said, Imam Ghazali rahimahullah narrates this. He says that four kings came together. The king of India, the king of China, and the king of the, Rome, of the Romans, the Roman emperor, and the Persian emperor. One of them said that I will regret what I say, but I do not regret that which I have not said. The other says, if I speak with any speech, then I make sure that I own my speech and my speech doesn't own me. Meaning, the consequences will return good to me and not bad. The next said, that I find it very strange, the matter of a person, that when he speaks, his speech will return to him in a manner that it will harm him. And if it doesn't return to him, then it doesn't benefit him. Then what was the point of speaking? And the last of them said, that I am more capable. Ana ala raddi ma lam akul. That I am more capable of stopping myself from not saying what I haven't yet said than returning back within myself what, ha what I have already said. What can you learn from this? In every situation, silence was better. In every situation, my brothers and sisters, silence is better. And so Imam Qushiri rahimahullah, he said, رَأَيْتُ الْكَلَامَ يُزِينُ الْفَتَى وَالصَّمْتُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ قَدْ صَمَتْ فَكَمْ مِنْ حُرُوفٍ تُجُرُّ الْحُتُوفِ وَمِنْ نَاطِقٍ وَدَّ أَنْ لَوْ سَكَتْ That how many people, right? Although speech, it can beautify a person, right? Speech has very good benefits as well. But silence is very beneficial for the person who observes it. And how many words, they will drag a person to their death. They will drag a person to their death. Right. How many words they can enter a person into Islam, they can cause a person to exit Islam. It's just a word that can cause a person to be in, into his marriage, and it's just a word that can throw that person out of his marriage. Right. Just a word. And how many people are there after they have spoken, now they wish, only had I stayed silent. Only had I stayed silent. On the day of resurrection, my brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that those will be the farthest from me will be atharsarun. Those people who speak, they don't observe silence. And they speak in things that don't regard them. And in specific, they speak in those areas Allah Ta'ala has forbidden them from speaking. 
Allah Ta'ala has forbidden them from speaking. One of my teachers would say, silence is also something to do. Silence is also something to do. So my brothers and sisters will ask Allah Ta'ala that He grant us the capability that we are able to observe speech when it's the best to do so. And when is a time when a person can never go wrong in his speech? Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said that the meaning of the one who believes in Allah Ta'ala then he should say good otherwise he should stay silent is that he should make the dhikr of Allah. He should make the dhikr of Allah. Because one thing that a person can say and it can never be wrong and it can never harm a person is praising Allah Ta'ala. Is praising Allah Ta'ala. So busy your tongues with dhikr so that you don't busy, busy it with other things elsewise. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we ask Allah Ta'ala that He give us the capability to apply this quality within our lives, that we don't destroy ourselves and our societies with our tongue, rather we make it a means to build our societies. Rather we make it a means to, to build love between ourselves, not destroy relations with, between ourselves. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله عباد الله إن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى به الملائكة المسبحة بقدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى الملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقم الصلاة